Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, and welcome to this second edition of the Desafia program, organized by Ethex and the Spanish government. The Desafia program Singapore has been searching for the top startups in Spain. And today we've got 10 of them who will be pitching for you and hopefully inspiring us all. But prior, I'd like to introduce Jose Maria Blasco, Head of Entrepreneurship at Ethex and the organizer of this Desafia program. Jose Maria, thank you very much for joining us. Please come on stage. Thank you very much, Pablo. Desafia Singapore on Health is a program by Ethex, the Spanish International Trade and Investment Promotion Agency, in collaboration with MECTEC Actuator, that is our local partner in Singapore, for building a technological bridge between Spain and Singapore on MedTech, eHealth, and Biotech. Through this program, Spanish top startups on these sectors are receiving mentorship, coaching, and training in their approach to Southeast Asian healthcare ecosystem through Singapore. Having an immersion program into the Singaporean healthcare ecosystem, making closer Spain and Singapore, and having meetings with the top Singaporean corporates, funds, hospitals, universities, and startups. For talking about potential business operations on uh, investment, financing, or collaboration between Spain and Singapore. We have 10 of these top Spanish startups participating in the Desafia program Singapore on Health, pitching for you today. Thank you very much, Jose Maria, for joining us. And now joining us from Granada, Manuel Figueruela is the Managing Director at Regemat. Regemat is going to prove that we can actually print more than just models. With you, 3D printing, version 3.0. In Regemat 3D, we think that the best investment in life is health. The 80% of the global population over age 65 is affected by cartilage uh, pathologies, as for example in the knee. Do you imagine to have the possibility of solving it? In Regemat 3D, we are doing it because we are designing and manufacturing 3D bioprinters and bioreactors to print tissues and uh, human tissues and organs in the labs. We have a unique 3D tissue generation model because we can print the scaffold with uh, autologous stem cells from their own patients. We are feeding the scaffolds with protein growth factors and we are achieving const constructs that mimic the human living tissues. But after this, we can functionalize this construct, this construct with the bioreactor uh, to achieve functional tissues ready to be implanted in the patient. And we are the only worldwide company that customized the bioprinter because we are not configuring the bioprinter with different components. We have the possibility of developing and adapting uh, ad hoc tools depending of the, of the needs from our researchers and collaborators. Our system is validated for different applications. As for example, you can see here, the green points are collagen type two the market that express the cell's viability. Here we have control site, and therefore we can regenerate cartilage. Our technology is applied in, in different uh, fields, as for example, the tissue engineering, as I told you, but also in the biomaterial development, we are collaborating with the European, Aerospatial European Agency in a project in which we will develop a biomaterial which is going to be tested in zero gravity condition, but also we have another project in which we are functionalizing biomaterials with graphene fibers with the aim of achieving a conductive material that uh, is going to be applied in the spinal cord regeneration, but also in the drug testing because we have the possibility of printing human tissues and therefore we are covering the gap between the animal model and the human model. We have the possibility of printing colon cancer tumor to test the drug uh, with human tissues, reducing the times, reducing the cost and reducing the use of animals in the lab. We are doing our own clinical trials and I'm going to explain to explain you uh, how our bioprinter works. We are uh, working with magnetic resonance, we are doing the segmentation, and after the segmentation, the bioprinter can print a scaffold with the same structure and dimension of the injury in the patient. During the same process, 
we are feeding the scaffold with the cells from the patients, adding proteins and so, and we are implanting the, the scaffold in the knee of the patient. And in less than two years, we are achieving to regenerate the cartilage and there is no rest of the material used for the scaffold because it's biodegradable and biocompatible. We develop bioreactors. In this case, uh, we have um, the bioreactor for knee re uh, cartilage regeneration in the knee, and we have it patented. We are printing the, the, the knee of the patient with the pathology, we are planting the scaffold, and we are reproducing all the movement, the charities, we are controlling CO2, pH, humidity. We are reproducing in the lab all the conditions done in vivo. And after this process, we are achieving functional cartilage ready to be implanted in the patient. We have other bioreactor, as, as this one for arterial ar arteries uh, functionalization, but uh, we have uh, also the possibility of developing other bioreactor. We are not only manufacturers, we are all, uh, also researchers. Uh, we have our own lab in our facilities in the south of Spain, and we are applying our technology and our knowledge in uh, different applications and research uh, projects, as for example, uh, cartilage, skin, and uh, spinal cord regeneration. We have a very experienced team, and we have also recognized professionals in the field of the uh, market science. The current situation, nowadays we are present in more than 25 countries around the world. We have three business lines, uh, one for the bioprinters, another one bioreactors, and also all the recurrent sales with the uh, fungibles, biomaterials. We are collaborating with more than 100 research groups around the world. Here we have the, the numbers of the market in which we are operating in uh, from markets and markets report. Our financial plan, we are uh, achieving to increase our turnover year by year since uh, six years ago. We have closed two equity crowdfunding round over one million, and we have also access to national and European grants. This year, uh, for example, we have closed and we have achieved two European projects over uh, 700,000 euros for funding. And our roadmap, uh, nowadays, we are closing the, the crowdfunding route. We are preparing the, the company for, for the IPO, probably at the end of the next year, and we are moving to the clinical applications, which uh, uh, is our main aim uh, right now. Manuel, really, really impressive. So, um, printing cartridge, this, this is going to change surgery of the knee all around the world. How, how soon can we actually see this happening in a hospital? Well, uh, we are doing our clinical trials in Mexico because the regulatory allow us to work with the patients and we will have the results in less than two years. After this, we will collaborate with the uh, European uh, agency to reduct the regulatory to do the same here in Europe. Therefore, we think that the clinical applications will be ready in less than four years, more or less. Well, uh, best of luck with that and with your IPO for next year. I hope you, you achieve your, your goals, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing people enjoying your solution. Thank you for joining Thank us you. today, Manuel. Meritil Teixidó is joining us from Barcelona today. Her project is breaking barriers. She is designing a vehicle that is going to change our minds. The man has long dreamed about reaching the brain by crossing difficult barriers. At Gate to Brain we have a dream that it's to cross barriers and bring medicines beyond them. Barriers such as the biological barriers, but also the barriers of the lack of development and investment in pediatrics. And why not the barriers to achieve one day health could be for everyone, everywhere. But why the brain? Because the brain is the more precious organ in the human body, but also the more difficult to reach when we need to treat it. This is due to the existence of the blood-brain barrier that protects it. The reality is that one every four of us suffer from a brain disease during our life. The good news is that there are drug candidates being developed in centers worldwide to, to fight these diseases. But 98% of these drugs will fail crossing the BBB and this will stop their development and the opportunity for patients. Gate to Brain is a technology based in peptides that help drugs from different natures to be able to reach the brain. 
our technology is based in peptides that are already patented. Let me show you one image. Quantum dots are fluorescent nanoparticles not able to cross the BBB alone. But when we decorate with our peptides, we can see them reaching the brain parenchyma. To be aligned with our mission, and having in mind that children are a quarter of our present, but are 100% of our future, we decided that the first indication that will benefit from our technology will be in the field of pediatric oncology. G2B002 is the therapeutic proof of concept that tries to fight against pediatric brain tumors with intact blood brain barrier. We have very efficacy results just recently proving the evidence that the therapeutic use of our technology in terms of increase of survival and reduction of tumor burden in these animal models derived from patients. G2B002 is an opportunity for all those patients suffering from DIPG and pediatric glioblastoma that one day can be expanded to other tumors that are sensible to the same drug, including adults. In fact, our business model is from pediatric to adult. One of our dreams is to reach a clinical trial in DIPG in 2025. But in parallel, we are working with Big Pharma to prove the technology in their own candidates for other diseases. This has the aim to create trust and trigger a potential acquisition of the technology. After this acquisition is when our love technology will have impact in thousands of people worldwide. We have recently proved that the technology has the potential to transport drugs from different natures across the broadband barrier in vivo. One of our strengths is the IP around the technology and also the freedom to operate. We are a team that dreams to cross barriers and bring medicines beyond them. Thanks. Medichel, thank you very much. This uh, sounds like a dream come true for many people who have no other way of resolving their needs. Could you tell me, I imagine getting these drugs to clinical trials must be challenging, apart from extremely expensive. What kind of funds do you need to raise to get there? Yeah, to make the dream of having a clinical trial in DIPG in 2025, we need to be able to attract 6 million euros. And for this, we will combine grants at national and international with private investors, also national and international, to make the dream come true. Well, here you have it. If you want to be one of those investors who helps change minds and brains, this is the access. Marichel, thank you very much for joining us today. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope to see your drugs on the market very, very soon. Thanks. Thank you. And next, joining us from Valencia, is the startup Luz. CEO and co-founder Rafael de la Cuadra is going to tell us all about how interventions for cataracts are going to change. Rafael, thank you for joining us. 22 million cataract surgery take place every single year in the world. Which is our purpose? We seek to improve people's life through the best quality of vision. What are we going to do? What's the problem? Now, nowadays, after the cataract surgery, people can have a good short vision, medium vision, or long-term vision. But now, with Luz Global, now they will have the three ranges of vision in a perfect way with no allos and no any problems of focusing. Why? Because we are going to produce this new lens that is composed by an intraocular ring and a monofocal lens that focus itself, replaying the crystalline solution, the natural crystalline solution. This is a real innovative product that will change the way you see the world. The founder, the main founder, the president is Dr. Othina, a doctor that has more than 30 years of experience, surgery experience, and that is a real specialist in cataract surgery. Then there is a team with uh, lawyers, economists. This is a senior team. We are not starting the project. The Luz lens is validated by, in, by international patents all over the world, in Europe, 
in the United States of America, in Asia, South America. And now is also validated by the main technological institute of ophthalmology, ophthalmologic institutes in Europe. What did we do and what are things to do? Miles to achieve in the near future, okay? We did the lens, we did the manufacturing, we did the clinical trials in animals, we demonstrate the functionality of the lens, and now we have to do clinical trials in humans. And after that, to get the FDA mark and the CE mark in order to reach the market, which is our strategy for reaching the market. In 2024, we'll go to the main world congresses, ophthalmologic congresses, and we'll work with prescriptors in order then to teach how to implement these lenses globally. We are going to start in 2024, and in 2027, we want to have a worldwide presence with our lens. The 30% of the cataracts market is held, is supported by uh, high-level premium intraocular lenses, and our lens is premium. This market will reach nearly five billion in 2026, five billion dollars, and there are only five companies sharing the. the 57% of share market in the world. We want to be the sixth one, or maybe the first one. The profits, it's very easy. Uh, any, one, one lens, the direct cost in materials are really 20 euros, and the price, the selling prices are around 1,000 euros. So you can imagine the EBITDA and the profits we are going to get in the next years. Next steps to reach the market, just to finish the clinical trials in humans, to start the marketing process all over the world, with physical and digital marketing, we have, already, we have already agreements with the main clinics in Europe, or the main in Spain, and we are going to reach the market in four years. Luz Global is a new vision for everybody. Fantastic, Rafa, uh, that's really inspiring. Um, tell me, from now until this is actually on the market, you need funding, and there are some problems you need to resolve. Tell me what, what has to happen from now until we can expect this be in the surgery. Okay, they are not problems, they are issues. What we are going to do now is to get the FDA approval and the CE market approval and to do the clinical test in humans. After that, we start the marketing campaign in order to scale globally all around the world. Fantastic. Well, I wish you best of luck, both in the round and in resolving those issues. And I, I hope to be able to see you guys on the market very, very soon. Thanks for joining Thanks, us today. Thanks, Paulo. Carmen Álvarez is the Managing Director of Tetra Neuron. Tetra Neuron, based in Valencia, is applying a new kind of therapy to brain damages that we have all heard of many, many times. Carmen, thank you very much for joining us. Today, I will talk to you about Alzheimer's. Alzheimer, it's a disease that 50 million people and their families suffer on a daily basis. It's going to be considered the next pandemic of the century and should be treated like that. Despite more than 2,000 clinical trials that have been performed, nothing is working. And one of the reasons is because these trials have been based on a very narrow vision of the disease. In tetraneuron, we consider that Alzheimer's it's a multifactorial disease, and a multifactorial disease requires a multifactorial treatment. And this is what I'm going to show you today, a therapy that is able to interact with most of the alterations that occur in the Alzheimer's brain. We are Tetraneuron, and we are a gene therapy biotech company spin-off of the Cajal Institute in Madrid. We are developing a gene therapy for Alzheimer's disease using a very radical new approach to brain and neurodegenerative conditions. We have discovered that E2A4 has a major play in, in the Alzheimer's disease. E2A4 is a transcriptional factor that is the responsible of the neuronal homeostasis. And under stress condition, E2A4 is phosphorylated by p 3 a kinase, inhibiting their function. These neurons that has a non-functional version of E2F4 starts working badly 
these neurons start working sending bad messages to the rest of the of the network and that produce neuronal inflammation and the neuronal death. So we have demonstrated that the expression in the neuron of a modified version of E2F4 uh, enabled to become phosphorylated and totally functional restore the normal functions of the neuron. So based on our preclinical data with one single injection of our gene therapy, we will be able not only to prevent the advance of the Alzheimer's disease, also to recover some aspects that uh, have been already compromised. So we have been working uh, during many years in that hypothesis and currently we have a good portfolio of preclinical efficacy data approved in a Murray model of Alzheimer's disease. We have safety and uh, tox studies supporting our efficacy data. And most important, we have a clear CMC roadmap for the vector production. Comparing the other players that are in the same landscape, while others are only focusing to restore one single alteration in the, in the pathogenesis, our target is able to interact and restore most of the alterations that occur in, in the Alzheimer's brain. For sure, Alzheimer is our first asset and we are currently in preclinical development with the idea to uh, start the clinical trials in the, in the coming years. But we are not only working in Alzheimer, we are also exploring the efficacy of our target in other neurological conditions like glaucoma, Parkinson, or even aging. And finally, we have a very passionate and multidisciplinary uh, team added by science and management and supported by, by a great group of advisors. For instance, we have a, one of the most important key opinion leaders in, in the Alzheimer's working with us. And we believe that together with our investors and collaborators, we will be able to save the life of the future Alzheimer's patients. Thank you. Carmen, very inspiring. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I hope it's the case, but I believe there's still some work to be done. You're trying to raise funds right now, I understand. How much money are you trying to raise? What do you need it for? Well, we're looking for a professional investors, like a professional venture capital, in order to establish a Series A, about uh, 26 million euros, uh, to continue advising in our uh, clinical trials and also to develop a second indication for, for our target. Well, thank you very much. I hope you achieve uh, your goals and you close that round as soon as possible so that this is actually affecting people very, very soon. Carmen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Manuel Rodriguez is a therapist. He's actually a rehabilitation therapist. He is the head of rehabilitation at Adamo Robotics. And he is here today to talk to us about a completely different way of offering therapy. A very interesting one. Manuel, welcome. Hi. Thank you very much for being listening uh, to me. I hope you are well. In fact, I hope you are well, well seated, not like that. If not, after that, you will be like that and you will look for me for, for a massage or you will look for my clinic. So uh, this is a reality. Uh, we have a health problem. Around the 80% of world population have musculoskeletal disorders. So this is as well an, econom an economic problem. Uh, we know that with low back pain, with neck pain and other musculoskeletal disorders, national systems of health uh, spends more than 350 billions, billions. So think about it. about it. I'm sure in one time of your life you have suffered a low back pain, or maybe doing sports you have suffered an sprained ankle. So is uh, uh, we we can think that the companies and the health systems are looking for new tools and new systems to treat the patients and get improve uh, these pathologies. So I'm presenting you Adamo Robot. It's the first world collaborative uh, uh, robot uh, in the world that treats that treat musculoskeletal disorders with compressed air. And we can heat that air and we can uh, get cooled, uh, cooled 
uh, call that, that error. Let me show that video. Uh, as you can see, it's a device and it has a robotic arm uh, uh, with a handle piece in the end of the arm. It's 100% safe. And in that piece, we have a thermographical camera and a, a 3D camera for the uh, patient recognition. It allows the physiotherapist uh, to make a good diagnosis and a good follow-up follow -up of the pathologies. A part of that, we have a nozzle in the, hand, uh, in the, in the handle piece, and th that nozzle expected the uh, compressed air. So this is the hardware, but we have a software where the physiotherapist can program all the treatment. Uh, he can change the different parameters, he can change the velocity, the temperature, and the, the number of cycles. As well, he can open different historical uh, uh, um, history of the patient. So, we didn't invent anything. Uh, as the Romans knew, uh, the pressure and the temperature are two widely tools that are used uh, in, the in the world of, of physiotherapists. Our value proposition uh, are, this treatment is contactless. So, if one patient has a, a, skin, a skin problem, we can treat it. Regard regarding to that, it is a painless treatment. Uh, the patient doesn't feel any pain. This is an unbelievable part of our treatments. Uh, as we told before, we give to the physiotherapist uh, the possibility to make a good diagnosis. We know the difference in the right side and left side of 0.6 degrees is a sign of, of pathology. And the physiotherapist can, can give an objective uh, data to the, to the patient. Uh, we have uh, an efficient uh, tr treatment, so uh, we are working now in hospitals and we know that it is efficient. And uh, we can generate different automatisms with a robotic arm, so the companies uh, will improve his, their assist, uh, assistential levels. In a marketing point of, of view, we know that robotic and health are, uh, are in fashion. So uh, the companies can uh, get increased uh, the, their marketing and, and their message, and the patient will receive uh, as well as, a innovative, uh, as an innovative treatment, uh, the Adamo robot. This is an example that you can see in three minutes of programming uh, for 10 to 20 minutes treating and a cheap uh, a cost of the, of the treatment, uh, for example, 30 euros per treatment, Indeed, that means uh, three treatments per hour, we have an income of, uh, of 172.800 uh, uh, euros annually. annually. So we have different achievements. We have the, the, the electric and safety certifi uh, certificate, and we are waiting for the uh, notified body uh, to, to have the medical class 2A. We have our own evidence. We made a research in low back pain uh, where we could improve the low back pain in the patients. And we are working, as I told before, in, in Hospital La Rioja in San Pedro, in Logroño, and in a private uh, group, in Bupa Group, in Sanitas, uh, where we can try the, the device, and finally, uh, we can make a good deployment. Addition, in addition to that, uh, we have won a, a European program, DIH program, uh, where, uh, which uh, allows us to make deployments in Germany, in Italy, Portugal, and Spain. So finally, what are we looking for? We are looking for distributors and different clinics uh, and hospitals that allows us to increase our traction in the market. So thank you very much for listening to me, and you have my email uh, to contact uh, to me wherever, wherever you want. Manuel, thank you very much. Uh, fantastic machine we're talking about here that is going to leave a lot more time for therapists to concentrate on what really matters, I understand. Now, you're not looking for funding here. This machine is already built. It's a question of deployment, if I'm not mistaken. What are the next steps in Adamo Robot? Yes, for us it's very important to, to make some more deployments and to increase our research. These, these two points allows, uh, will allow us to, to, to grow up and to go to the international market. Fantastic. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. I'm sure this is going to be a great success, and I hope to be 
uh, seeing it on the market very, very soon. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us, Mara. For those of you that are wondering what the metaverse or what virtual reality has to do with medicine, this is Kauka. Kauka is a startup that is joining us from the Basque country in the north of Spain. And her CEO, Tani Teznal, is going to change your mind about how to train in the medical industry. Tani, thank you for joining us. Each second, different surgeries are taking place all over the world. On average, six people are intervening or either assisting in each surgery. For many of these professionals, it will be their first time making this procedure. I'm sure none of us would like to be the first ones, right? Luckily, there exist different training techniques. You can either operate on dead bodies, use medical dummies, or even hire actors. Unfortunately, these procedures are very expensive. They require highly demanded installations and different medical equipment. This is the reason Cauca was born. I am Tani Tesnal, and I have spent the last two and a half years developing a platform for training different healthcare procedures from anywhere at any time and at the fraction of the cost. I'm sure most of you already know about virtual reality technologies. Maybe some of you have already tried a virtual reality experience, but very few of you are really aware of the limitless functionality that virtual reality offers in such complex environments. We have developed an online platform for individual and collective training based on analytics and management tools. While using our platform, we are able to evaluate users from students and healthcare professionals the same way we do on person. Kauka was born in 2020, difficult year. We have a very solid technology thanks to our partner Innovai. They have been developing AR and VR solutions from 20 years ago. We are just focused and specialized in the healthcare sector. Actually, we are part of the Basque Health Cluster in Spain. We work with three types of customers. Universities and training centers. We offer a total immersion for the, for the student. They just put on the VR glasses and they can train using the training mode and evaluation mode. The training mode guides the students step by step on how they have to make the procedure and in the evaluation mode, they have no help at all. Our system gathers all of the data and information on how the training has been done. We also work with hospitals, clinics, and healthcare centers. We provide a continuous professional training tool. We also have a multi-user platform. Our application is used to connect different professionals from all over the world in the same metaverse environment. We also work with pharmaceuticals and medical device companies. In this case, we offer the latest virtual reality technology for marketing, sales, and training. We make effective product demonstrations, demo for trade fairs, Congress, and tailor-made experiences. So a little summary of Kauka. We started in 2020 creating a our first prototype. We went to market while starting to develop our platform in 2021. Well, we achieved our first sale. This year, in 2022, we are already going to multiply times for our sales. Our team keeps on growing and we are already eight people working in Cauca. And for the next couple of years, we want to create a library with standardized contents for our platform. And this is a little bit of Cauca, the future of medical training. Tani, thank you very, very much. Um, for those of you that haven't seen this in action, I actually have been lucky enough to test it and it is really, really amazing. Tani, I know you're trying to raise funds now and having seen already what you're capable of doing, what is missing? What do you need these funds for? Thank you, Pablo. We need this uh, funding to be able to create the content for our standardized uh, library to put on our marketplace. So we need the funding to start developing the content. Excellent. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I'm sure this is going to be a great success. Thank you very much for joining us today, Tani. Thank you. David Segarra is the CEO at Apta Targets. Apta Targets is a startup born here in Madrid that is accessing our brains in a completely different way at a time of great need for many people. David, thank you for joining us. Please inspire us. 
Aptotargets is a clinical stage biotech company specialized in aptamer technology. We are developing Aptol, which is an aptamer targeting inflammation and acute ischemic stroke is the lead indication. At this moment, we are advancing in a clinical trial phase 2A and we plan to continue with uh, pivotal clinical trials, phase 2B, phase 3, and also to expand our pipeline. Stroke is still a great challenge. 50 million strokes worldwide every year, and 5 million people die. Stroke is the leading cause of mortality in women, and by far the leading cause of permanent disability. However, there are few treatments available today. And those treatments are focused on the recanalization of the arteries, either with mechanical thrombectomy or with thrombolytics. These treatments are very important, are necessary, but not sufficient. Even with a successful recanalization, almost 90% of the patients are still impaired after three months. And this is in great part due to the inflammation. Inflammation plays a critical role in increasing the brain damage during the acute phase of stroke. And this is how our product, Aptol, comes into play. Aptol has been designed to inhibit toll-like receptor number four, a receptor which plays a critical role in the inflammatory response during the acute phase of a stroke. So by the inhibition of this receptor, we might be able to reduce the brain damage and provide a benefit to the patient. We are using aptamer technology. Aptamers take the best from biologics and the best from chemical entities. They have a specific and stable binding. They could be ma manufactured by chemical synthesis. They are non-immunogenic and have an excellent safety profile. As we always said, aptamers fit perfectly with acute indications. We have amazing data so far. We have seen that the aptol has a huge efficacy in reducing the brain, da the brain damage. And it has also an excellent safety profile and a wide time window of, of intervention, which is very important in the application in the clinical practice. So far, we have already completed a clinical trial phase 1A in healthy volunteers that have confirmed an excellent safety profile. And we are now ending a clinical trial phase 1B to A in 151 patients. This study is going to confirm the safety and efficacy in acute ischemic stroke patients. We plan next to advance to pivotal trials, phase 2B3, to confirm the efficacy and safety in stroke patients and to license and go to the market. And finally, we are also interested in expanding uh, to other indications where we believe that this drug could also be effective and also to develop new aptomers. David, thank you so much. That's, um, that was really inspiring. Um, so basically, um, thanks to this kind of treatment, you are actually helping people recover uh, functions that they probably wouldn't be able to recover in any other way after a seizure. And, and this is quite amazing. Thank you so much. Very inspiring. Now, I imagine you need funding to continue uh, investing into this project. What are the next steps? Where do we have to go to be able to see this on the market? We plan next um, to continue with a pivotal clinical trial, phase 2B or a phase 2B3, to confirm the efficacy and safety of the drug, and to license to a pharma company, and to go to the market as soon as possible. Let's hope so. This is uh, really look, we're really looking forward to this, and it's going to be a great need. David, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Pablo. Vera Guerreiro is joining us from Barcelona today, and she is representing Medictor. Medictor is applied artificial intelligence to all our clinical and medical needs. Vera, welcome. Please join me. Thank you, Pablo. So I'm here with you today and I would like to start by telling you a story of something that happened to me the other day. So I went for a run and in the middle of it I just misstepped and I twisted my ankle. So after that I decided to go immediately to the ER after consulting with Dr. Google 
and because I didn't knew what was wrong with me and I eventually could lose my leg. You know? So I went to the ER and I was there expecting to be seen by a specialist and I ended up waiting for two hours and 45 minutes to be seen by a GP that told me that, okay, just go home, put some ice on it, and if you have any pain, just go and take any normal OTC painkiller. So, as you can imagine, I've done a lot of wrong decisions here. I didn't need to go to the ER. I lost my time and the time of the, G of the GPs. So, it's, it's difficult to make decisions on what to do regarding doctors nowadays. And indeed, this is a worldwide problem. People tend to Google their symptoms and make wrong decisions and saturate ERs nowadays. So, and Medictor is here to help solve this first step in healthcare, which is driving patients to the right level of care at the right time. How we do this? We do this with using our tool in a very scalable and reliable way and building what is Medictor today, which is the most accurate EI-based medical assistant for triage and pre-diagnosis. Our tool mimics a human-like conversation. So as a patient, you can explain in your own words how you are feeling, and that will lead to a conversation of an average number of 14 questions, and at the end, we'll provide you with a recommendation on what to do next and a list of possible conditions that you may be suffering. So we do, we've been doing this for the last 10 years, uh, building our own technology from scratch, which and it is a very refined and robust technology. We have a massive medical database that covers 95% of primary care. We have machine learning techniques that allows our AI engine to have intuition, to choose always the next best question like a human being. And we have all of this technology available now, nowadays in 15 different languages. So the technology is important for us and we've been building it for the last years and improving it, but also the clinical evidence of Medictor. And nowadays we have 91.3% accuracy based on our clinical trials conducted with real patients in real life situations. So Medictor, it's a white label B2B SaaS solution available in all interfaces that can be up and running in four weeks time. For us, it's been very important to build this robust technology. And like I said before, we've been doing this for the last years. And since last October, we raised one of the biggest uh, investment rounds in Spain our inten intention is not only to keep improving our, te our technology, but also to expand our solution worldwide. We already have global traction. We have almost 15 million users all over the globe and more than 5 million assessments done with using our tool in all geographies. And it's our, it's our intent to keep proving our value proposition worldwide in different verticals. So we are here to help insurance companies, hospitals, the pharmaceutical industry, and also telemedicine platforms to improve their services. For the insurance companies, Medictor enables the reduction of cost provision by avoiding unnecessary visits and from our experience, we know that up to 80% of users after Medictor choose not to have any medical interaction. And 60% of those actually choose any digital channel over a face-to-face -face visit. For the hospitals, and here we can not only work for the patient and using Medictor as a digital front door for triage, but we also have our professional version that it's there to help professionals to improve their triage flow. And we can avoid uh, necessary tests, uh, tests and treatments, and we can even decrease those waiting times in up to 45 minutes. For the, the pharmaceutical industry, 
Medictor generates awareness of disease. We can help them find undiagnosed patients online and guide them to the right treatment. And we also can provide important and valuable information on those patients. For the telemedicine platforms, we are there to drive the patient to the right level of care by shortlisting the medical specialities and minimizing also the time to assist the patient from the healthcare professionals by providing them with information previous to that interaction. We offer all of these services in a very simple model, business model. We only have a one-time license fee and a monthly recurring fee based on our customer's driver, driver's business. And if you have any doubts about why Medictor, just let me remind you that we are the only one with clinical validation in the market using real patients and real life situations. We are available in different languages. We are the only ones that uses natural language processing to give that best experience for the patient. And of course, we have 10 years of experience globally. So we understand you and your needs. So my question to you is, are you ready to improve access to healthcare with us? Vera, thank you very much. Uh, greatly insightful. So basically, all medical knowledge is going to be on your application and is helping me take decisions. You're talking about a number of verticals that you can offer this technology to. You're a fully, raised, fully fundraised startup, so you're not looking for funds. What is it you are looking for now? Yeah, no, we are not looking for funds at this moment in time. For us, the most important right now is to keep improving the technology and to expand our market share worldwide. Farah, thank you very much. And for those of you out there in the healthcare industry, insurance companies, hospitals, anybody who wants to reduce the amount of time and resources necessary to take care of your patients, please remember Medictor. Farah, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Good luck. Thank you. And now, joining us from Navarra in the north of Spain, we have Juan Antonio Ruiz, who is the CEO of Nadetec, and he's going to be talking to our hearts. How intensely would you live your life if you knew that your heart could be repaired? 20 million people suffer a heart attack every year. Do you know what this means? 20 million is more than the population of a huge megacity like Tokyo. From those 20 million, 10 million are the ones that will die in less than five years. 20 million, 10 million, just numbers. Can you please think about how many people behind those numbers? families, relatives, friends, people constantly living with that suffering and an uncertainty in their heads, what is going to happen to that weak heart? Imagine that we can release them from that question. Imagine that we can offer them more time, time to fall in love, time to see their children grow, time to chase for their dreams. Now, I'm telling you that this is possible. There is a conjunction of entities and people affected by this reality that have joined to solve the problem, and they will build a bioheart. A bioheart is a complex biostructure that supports the sick heart and help it, helps it to work as when it was healthy. University of Navarra and Gregorio Marañón Hospital offers the knowledge about cardiology. University of Zaragoza delivers the computational and electromechanical models of how the healthy heart works. CIC Nanogune, the state-of-the-art biopolymers that allows building scaffolds needed for these big and complex structures. Bioengineering Technology of Catalonia, the human-derived pluripotent stem cells that populate 
those scaffolds and that are matured by a bioreactor built by the Arctic Air. And finally, Nadetech. Our company has joined the gap. We offer the technology that goes beyond the 3D bioprinting right now. We offer the technology, our knowledge, but further than that, we offer really tons of illusion. For us as company and for me personally, this is a dream. It is right center of our purpose as company to contribute to improving people's lives. We are having the device ready in one year and in another year, the foreseen business will be complemented with bio inks and materials as a service. We know that the role of having a bio heart supporting a human being is long, but that business is viable much earlier, focusing on the research environment. We aim to double our current business in a short period of time, and to complete that demanding path, we are looking for investors who join this dream. We are looking for people that fall in love with this project and this purpose as we are. We know the goal is challenging. But what a heart is. When Nadetech talks about a heart, we talk about time. We talk about a second opportunity. We talk about love. We talk about life. If on top of investing in a high-tech company, you want to get involved in a business that is committed to improve people's lives, Nadetech is the right op option for you. It may be that one day our heart may just break because of love. Thank you. Juan Antonio, thank you so much. That's really insightful and very, very exciting. 3D printing hearts to save our lives. Amazing. Now, how long could it be from now until this is actually inside somebody's body replacing part of their heart? The BioHeart as a medical device will require a long journey till it supports a human being. Our foreseen business will focus on the device and the services complementing that device. And for that, we will need around one year and a half to be in the market. I can imagine this isn't a, a cheap process, um, and I understand you're raising funds now. What kind of funding is required to get to the next stage of this project? Right now, we are looking for three million to shorten that period, period of time and arrive the market in less than one year. Juan Antonio, tremendous. I wish you all the luck in the world. This is gonna save many people's lives. It's a great opportunity for investors. I hope you're extremely lucky and you can demonstrate the proof of, of this concept very, very soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And last but not least, Miguel Rodriguez is the CTO of Cela. He is joining us from Murcia and he is going to be showing us a completely different way of looking at our bodies. 3D put at the service of physicians around the world. Quite amazing. Listen to him. Miguel, welcome. Cancer. Everyone knows what this word means. Cancer is one of the biggest problems in the modern society. One of every six deaths in the world are due to, to cancer. One of the best treatments trying to remove cancer from the body is surgery. But those surgeries are complex. They involve high risk for the patient, high difficulty for the surgeon, and high cost for the, for, uh, for the hospital. And those surgeries require to be prepared. Nowadays, surgeons prepare, plan these surgeries uh, using medical imaging, a CT or an MRI, like this. They are great tools for diagnosis, but not so good for surgeons because a lot of questions remain unsolved. Those questions are really important and the result is that the surgeons must improvise critical decisions without enough information. Once again, the result is that what they find in the operating theater is different from what they expect. And here, a medical failure may have serious consequences for everyone. So imagine for a moment that we can eliminate 
any assumption. We can provide precise information in a one single compre uh, comprehensive solution. Yeah? In Cella Medical Solution, we take this CT MRI as some um, raw material and we apply artificial intelligence and advanced uh, algorithms creating a 3D model that is a copy of the patient anatomy from a very, very different point of view. We create 3D models with a very high level of detail, so in every anatomical element that is relevant for preparing the surgery, so surgeons can see inside the body before performing the, the surgery. And this 3D model is the core of a whole ecosystem covering the whole uh, life cycle of a, of a surgery, of a complex surgery. We provide a wide range of technologies, so uh, they are really, really useful for surgeons while preparing the surgery, practicing the surgery, or even during the uh, executing, execution of the, of the surgery. For example, our virtual 3D planner is a, a web tool where they can see, where they, they can analyze, they can understand the pathology, and they can make decisions. They, can, they have a lot of tools adapted to the specific surgery, so they can foresee the results of their decisions. And we can take this planner to the operating theater, integrating it into the robotic console. So they use the model as a GPS during the uh, surgery in real time. Yeah. In addition, virtual reality provides a new experience, absolutely impressive and immersive for educational purposes. But surgeons can not only see, they can touch the patient anatomy. We can 3D print in real size the patient organs, different colors, transparencies, and even different materials. We can mimic the physical properties of the tissues so they can perform the surgery before being with the real uh, patient. And our last uh, development, augmented reality, thanks to that, surgeons can see through the tissues of the patient, so they can know precisely where the tumor is and they enter into a new precise and personalized medicine, avoiding any type of, of mistake. We provide benefits for all stakeholders involved in the surgery. For hospitals, we provide time and cost reduction. We reduce technological and financial risk because they don't have to buy any hardware any license, we provide our models through a 3D as a service uh, business model. So we receive medical imaging through internet and we provide the, the service directly to, to the hospital. Doctors, they receive better surgical planning and they don't need to deal with complex software. They receive ready to use model. And the best part, surgeon, uh, patient, sorry. Patients have better results, less side effort, and we are proud to say that some discarded patients had a successful surgery thanks to our solution. We have proved this technology in more than 2,500 surgeries in five countries with hundreds of surgeons. We have tested this. We have done uh, surgeries in different uh, medical specialties thanks to our versatility, and nowadays we are more than 50 employees with a great R&D team and we are doing a great uh, scientific production. Thank you very much. Miguel, thank you so much. That, that is absolutely mind-blowing. But from what I understand, there are quite a few businesses that are being born in the 3D industry. Some are printing, some are scanning, some are doing virtual reality. What is your core differentiating value with respect to your competitors? Okay, in our opinion, there are three key aspects that make us different. First of all, clinical depth. Thanks to our medical imaging processing, we get the higher uh, level of detail and we can add all the medical information really, really valuable. Second, versatility. We are able to cover almost every medical specialty related to cancer surgery. And third, 
uh, technology combination. We are not a 3D printing company. We are not a virtual reality company. We think that every surgery is different. So we try to choose the best technological solution for each situation, trying to cover the whole life cycle of a complex surgery. We think that our models are really, really useful to, uh, and easy to use. And finally, uh, our, our thought, our, the way we approach the design is to create models by surgeons for surgeons. Amazing. Miguel, thank you very much for being here today. I wish you the best of luck. And I hope if I have to be in surgery, this is being used. I hope to see you soon. All the best. Even great things have to come to an end. I hope you have been just as inspired as I have with these 10 startups. I want to take the opportunity to thank Ethix and the Spanish government for having prepared this program, the Safia Singapore, and having identified 10 of the top talents inside the health sector. Next year, we will have more for you, and we hope to inspire you one year after the next. Until then, I wish all startups best of luck and investors make good choices. Thank you very much for your time.